did you create? How did something come from nothing? And if my friend here, my good friend, if you know this, he didn't answer it. He's, he, he's called Switch and Bait. He said, how do you prove it that God created the universe? But he's not answered that question yet. How can something that does not exist, nothing, come into existence? How can that happen? It's not possible. It's not scientific. If you could answer that, bro, I'd be very grateful. I'm sorry, has it got red on you? It's not so much an answer, it's more of a description. Okay. If someone created everything, who the heck created God? Okay. I'm going to answer that, but just remember, scientific materialism cannot answer the question how something came from nothing. It's not scientific, end of. Okay? It's an assumption. You look at light, it's billions of, stretches billions of years, and so you assume that there was a big bang. That's an assumption. No one can prove that something came from nothing scientifically. You try to do that. You try to make an orange appear from nothing there. You can't do it. Now he said, how can God create something? Because who created God? What you've done is what I would call a category, a category mistake. The creation is physical. It's matter and energy. Yeah, but when you're talking about God, we're talking about an eternal being. So when you say, how can an eternal being who created him, it's not logical because that which is eternal cannot have anybody that has created the eternal. It cannot be. So you're, category, you're making a category mistake. Now let me get you on to another subject. Sorry, you can't word, use the word eternal being and say there isn't an eternal being that made the eternal being. Or else the word eternal wouldn't even exist, would it? My friend, the, the greatest idea of all ideas is that there is a God who knows all, everything and has always existed. There is no greater idea than that. So to say that there was another God or other gods that created that God it, is nonsensical. There's got to be at the end of the chain someone who was always there who is all powerful. Now let me ask you a question. What is your opinion about Jesus Christ? Now let me just tell you what I believe, right? I believe that he died, that he rose again, that he is the Son of God, that he's my Lord and Savior. Now, you can you tell me or give me some critique of why you don't believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God, why you don't believe he died and rose again, okay? If you can do that, if you can show me that Jesus did not rise again, you have effectively defeated Christianity. It is as simple as this. So many thousands of years ago, when people had less technology, less ideas, less intelligence, apparently someone wrote a book about someone coming back to life in a cave, he put it in a cave, moved out of the cave, and apparently come back to life. Maybe someone robbed his freaking body because he was famous. Bear in mind they were like four foot tall and God knows what then. We live in a world these days where, you know, we watch films with magic and everything else. We don't ex believe it exists. But 2,000 years ago, Jesus could do magic. So it doesn't exist anymore. 2,000 years ago, Jesus come to do miracles. He come to help people. He come to save everyone. Where is he now? Coming. We actually need him, we're actually helping, we're actually asking for his help. Where is he? That is all I'm saying, that is the only proof I've got and the only proof I need. Yeah, I'll give you two points. First point is about scientific method. The scientific method, in the 1920s, scientists generally believed that you could have 100% scientific proof. But then they discovered quantum physics, quantum mechanics. And they realized that they could never say there is a fact that is 100% a fact scientifically because they realized there were things that were popping into existence at the physical level, quarks and things like that, that they couldn't say 100% what was a fact because it could change. So they said, sir, sir, Brian, 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 it's okay, it's okay, we're having a respectful conversation, thank you. Let, 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 let me just finish. Let, let people finish. Let me people finish. Let, let me finish my point. Brian, Brian, let me finish my point because he needs to hear it. 
Science said that fact is 100% prior to 1920. Then they discovered quantum physics. They realized they had to be more humble. You have to say 60 or 70% what we say is right. Now, how does that work with miracles? Nobody can say that miracles cannot actually happen. You cannot say miracles cannot actually happen because scientifically it's possible that something could come into our universe that we've not computed. Secondly, on the history of Jesus, number one, Jesus died. We've got evidence outside the Bible, Josephus, 110 AD, an enemy of Jesus said that Jesus died. Tacitus, Roman historian, an enemy of Jesus, said that Jesus died. 110 AD. These are enemies against Jesus. That is historical evidence that he died. Listen, it's so much an evidence that Dominic Crossan, who is an atheist skeptic, said this, that Christ dying on the cross is one of the most well-attested facts in ancient history. In history. Secondly, that he rose again. Are you ready for this? Women's testimony in the time of Jesus was only worth half that of a man. Right? Yeah. Women's testimony was only worth half that of a man. You would not.